In this video essay, I'll be comparing how the directors of Persepolis, directed by Marjane Strapi, and Master and Commander, directed by Peter Weir, present a number of ideologies, each telling a cultural story. I'll discuss the creative techniques and camera angles used by directors to communicate these ideologies, as well as touching on how Western and Eastern films differ in this respect. Thus, the ideologies I'll be discussing and contrasting are self-identity, nationalism, and culture. The first established ideology present in both Master and Commander and Persepolis is the idea of self-identity. In Master and Commander, there are multiple examples of this ideology, with our main character Jack Aubrey, played by Russell Crowe, exemplifying a captain who is very self-assured of his place in the world. We can see this from low-angle mid-shots that Jack is overconfident and undeterred, these being the kind of traits that are very important of a man of his status to maintain. During a meeting about whether to attack the ship or not, Peter Weir pulls the camera back fast as Aubrey gets up and argues that every ship can go down, no matter how strong. This fast dolly movement makes us feel the pressure and powerful energy of the character. Essentially, we must push back to make room for his ego. Jack's identity is also linked to the ship and his responsibility as captain. Therefore, every battle he has in it is a battle for his identity. When our heroes barely get away from the French, Jack confines to Dr. Stephen about his doubts and his own abilities as captain. As Aubrey questions himself, you'll notice the conversation shot in medium close-ups. This is done frequently by Peter Weir to tell the audience this conversation is important to the character's development and identities. A similar, a similar scene occurs later in the film, when Captain Jack must make an important decision about whether to follow the French or stay on the island. He is at a crossroads and ends up choosing his duties over his friend. As tension builds through the argument and true feelings come to light, we have followed the actors quickly in medium close-ups as they pace back and forth around the room. When the Doctor eventually realises Jack has lost all respect for him, valuing any mission over their long friendship and individuality, the medium close-up on Stephen moves into a close-up. This example of the camera pushing in further than ever before represents a climax in both characters' clashing self-identities. However, in the film Persepolis, this ideology of self-identity is conveyed very differently. Instead of heavy use of obvious Hollywood camera angles and movements that we see in Master and Commander, the director of Persepolis shoots varying shot sizes as well as implementing unique animation techniques and voiceover to support their ideology. A good example of this is at the start of the film when our main character Marjane is at the airport bathroom putting on her headscarf while an older woman to her side applies makeup. When Marjane walks past, the camera cuts from a two-shot to a close-up of the older woman giving her a dirty look. The close-up is chosen to highlight the hate and negativity Marjane is experiencing. We don't know if this actually happened, but it's how she perceives people in France feel about her. This theme of Marjane feeling like an outcast will pop up in many scenes to come, as it isn't limited to how she feels overseas, but in her home country as well. From a young age, we can see through her fascination in Bruce Lee and punk rock, shot in close-ups to indicate meaning, that she likes the idea of being an outcast. Accordingly, when Marjane bumps into another outsider, an older boy with a skull shirt, the camera is at a mid-shot, showing the young girl looking up at the boy's head, who is absent from the frame. This is done by the director to give us the perspective of a young girl's age. The next few close-ups are chosen to tell the audience that this character is important, and that Marjane straight away looks up to him. Although Marjane's identity is made up of many foreign Western interests, we can see she is heavily influenced by her childhood experiences in Iran. Sticking out the most is the traumatic experience Marjane sees her mother go through with men. In the following scene, we can see Marjane's mum unloading groceries into the car, when a strange man approaches her about lowering her headscarf. The directors know something unjust is about to unfold, so does the audience by the use of eerie such suspenseful music. The shots cut to a close-up as the man verbally abuses her with a sexist comment. This is followed up with quick-cut reaction shots of both Marjane and her mother. In doing so, the audience is left feeling shocked, just like the characters. As seen through an encounter later on in the film, when Marjane has a man arrested, this experience stayed with her and went on to influence her identity and thoughts towards certain men. These examples I've highlighted show that both respective films and directors have conveyed this ideology of self-identity in very contrasting, differing ways. Our next ideology in both films, and probably the most distinct to compare, is nationalism. 
From day one, the characters in Master of Commander are both patriotic and loyal to their country. Even the likes of kids and teenagers are put in harm's way, only show pure grit and devotion for their nation. Stand tall on the quarter deck, son, all of us. We can see this represented by Peter Weir during a scene where Captain Jack is visiting the wounded in a tracking white shot after a bloody onslaught from the French. Here the camera moves up from a blood-stained broken arm to Lord Blakeney, revealing a scared little boy's face. The director uses high-angle shots in this to convey the child as weak and vulnerable. Just the broken arm, sir. Lord Blakeney's scenes are very hard to believe in modern day, but they do highlight the obscure yet factual nationalism of this period the film is set. The patriotic values characters like Lord Blakeney possess can be seen stemming from advocated role models like Lord Nelson, one of Britain's most famous naval heroes. In Master and Commander, Lord Nelson represents everything the country stands for, and for the young boy Lord Blakeney, he is someone to aspire to. The director communicates this through a point of view close-up, pushing in on Lord Nelson's picture, clearly indicating him as an important figure for the young boy overcoming injury. Another important moment for this ideology is when our characters are preparing to get into close action. Captain Aubrey makes a patriotic speech, reminding the crew England is under threat of invasion. As Jack talks about how this ship is England, Weir has a close-up on Jack to signify this importance. Reaction shots pan down and across the ship's crew, also cutting to medium close-ups of members to highlight how much the captain's words mean to them and their personal identification to England. On the other hand, Persepolis portrays nationalism very differently. Throughout the film, nationalism is presented as an unpleasant thing, because it links back to conformity with the new regime. The main character, Marjane, wants to be proud of her country, but doesn't believe in the religious rules and conformity the regime present. Therefore, as an outsider, she finds it very difficult to express herself. This concept is shown by the director, when Marjane is attending university, and is told by similar-looking men in front of microphones, in a full shot, that she and all the other women at the university should be dressing even more conservatively limiting any hope of individuality. On top of this, it's important to remember that we see the nation of Iran through the eyes of our protagonists, and Marjane personally has had some very traumatic experiences growing up. When Marjane's uncle, who she was very close to, was arrested, he asks if she will go see him in prison. In this scene, the director chooses to start with an establishing shot that tells us a lot about how our protagonist sees as part of society. The trees are shaped to look wicked and the prison looks like a dungeon right out of a horror movie. By the end of the interaction with her uncle, the director cuts to wide shots to show how alone and isolated Marjane feels. After experiences like this, Marjane can't help but see her country as a cold and unforgiving place. Consequently, as an adult, our main character also has a hard time embracing her roots, as she feels everyone will just see her as a savage. This idea of guilt over national identity is shown when Marjane is coming back from a party and is walking alone down the streets at night. In this wide shot, the director shows shadows up against the brick wall, including Marjane's imaginary grandma, Shadow, following her. As her grandma tries to talk some sense into Marjane, the audience can see a visual representation of all her national guilt following her home. Another part of nationalistic ideals we can see shown in Master and Commander, but not Persepolis, is admiration and respect. While Master and Commander has the boy that idolises Lord Nelson, Persepolis' director chooses a lot more comedic approach, portraying the past leaders of the regime as bubbling, gullible and at times comedic idiots. In Persepolis, this is how the people of Iran see their past leaders. The representation and the view of the Iranian regime is definitely a more grounded, less patriotic one. The final ideology I'll be discussing is culture. This ideology is to do with how certain cultural narratives is being told, whether it's a western story like Master and Commander or an eastern one like Persepolis. We can see how production and cultural influences the film. In Peter Weir's movie Master and Commander we get a story based around an obvious hero who overcomes obstacles to therefore reach a satisfying resolution. That is a standard template for many Hollywood films. Our hero needs to look heroic and feel like a natural leader to the audience. This is accomplished by the director's use of shot types and camera angles. You will notice multiple low angle tracking shots, hero shots as some call them, when Weir is filming Captain Jack walking through the ship. By following Aubrey in this way, Weir signifies he is important and is a character we will be following for the rest of the film. 
Besides the opening scene, we get similar theme shots later on of our two heroes, Captain Jack and Dr. Steve Maturin, standing atop the crow's nest after barely getting away from the French. These kind of hero shots are reserved and implemented to better tell this cultural story. Another topic worth mentioning is the choice of non-diegetic mu music in Master and Commander's classical orchestral soundtrack, very similar to the works of other Western composers like John Williams and Ino Morricone. It is representative of the typical and heroic nature of the movie. This music makes the audience feel inspired and a sense of joy towards our main hero, better supporting and adding to the overall theme of the piece. The music choice in the scene creates excitement for the coming action, whilst heightening the enthusiasm felt for our characters. Fundamentally, after hearing this score, we need Captain Jack to win. Metacognition in this film also involves something called the free act structure. As discussed earlier, most Hollywood Western films will follow the free act structure closely. The only slight stray of this in Master and Commander is the twist ending, where the French captain pretends to be a doctor and momentarily gets away. Otherwise, the film leaves the audience with a typical resolution, as the main characters have won, this is generally considered a safer way to satisfy the audience. Two examples of Peter Weir directing to this structure is our hero's introductions and his trials and tribulations. Let's look at our main character's introduction. Midshipman Holland believes he saw a ship, so our main character, Captain Jack, is woken up to deal with the possible stakes. He grabs his sword and fastens his belt in a close-up, before walking to the bow in a low angle and pulling out a scope in a medium close-up. This directing plays to the audience's expectations, with low-angle shots used to signify in power and medium close-ups to signify importance in Western films. These are both traits a main character must have. On the contrary, the directors of Persepolis try not to use heroic low-angle shots or any other cinematic conventions because they don't want our protagonists to feel bigger than real life. They keep the camera angle pretty much horizontal in every shot, and therefore are not adhering to any of the Western codes and conventions that can be seen in Master and Commander. When comparing our two protagonists, we can see Marjane is a lot more human than Jack. She has faults and doesn't quite know where she fits into the world. The camera angles in Persepolis reflect this idea. Although Persepolis is a non-linear Eastern film that strays away from the free act structure, the directors will still use filmmaking techniques to help this movie flow. There is a heavy use of the cross dissolve and fade to black transitions, as well as some creative animation techniques. We can see this example of this when our main character, Marjane, is sitting in the airport thinking about her past. The camera pushes in while the color drains to black and white. This was used by the directors to tell the audience we are now entering a flashback to an earlier time. Another important aspect in the free act structure is applying a satisfying ending. Whereas Persepolis' ending is left very unresolved in typical art house fashion, as the movie ends back at the airport where it started, the picture fades from black and white to colour and pushes back to reveal Marjane in a mid-shot sitting in the taxi. The flashback seems to be over, but we the audience will never know what happened to Marjane or where she's heading next. The screen fades to black as the credits roll, we are left to ponder Marjane's fate. Persepolis' art house storytelling and deviation from the free act structure, non-linear narrative and uncertain ending all make it easy to recognise as an Eastern cultural film. From the comparisons I've made in this video essay, it can be seen that both films have communicated ideologies of self-identity, nationalism and culture through the use of filmmaking techniques in very different and contrasting ways. Master and Commander's representation of self-identity is one where the hero is self-assured of their place in the world through his position of commander. His power is conveyed through low-angle tracking shots, whereas Persepolis shows its protagonist as an outsider with close-ups on specific music. She is influenced by certain traumatic childhood experiences shown from medium reaction shots and eerie music. I have also discussed the ideology of nationalism in Master and Commander and how it is portrayed as patriotic as all characters show commitment and loyalty for their country. This is communicated through the panning shots during Captain Jack's speech. Whilst Persepolis, on the other hand, sees its characters challenging conformity and having mixed feelings about their nation as a whole, shown in the animation techniques and tracking shots of Marjane and her grandma. Lastly, there is culture. In this I explored the contrasting ways Western and Eastern directors present a compelling film with each mentioned ideology present. 
Ultimately, I think there is a lot to explore here with world cinema and all the amazing differences it offers up. For young modern day Western filmmakers specifically, I believe exposure to well-made foreign films in contrast to all great Western films can really help bring a new aspect to honing their craft.